We should definitely be concerned about uh, ingesting, you know, trace hormone or antibiotic levels in our in our meat uh, because it wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. Um, the only time we're treated with antibiotics are if you know you have strep throat or something like that, not if you're going to eat a hamburger. I think one of the biggest differences is the is the system in which we raise our animals, but it's really the production system would be the difference in our product over a, what I would call a conventional product. We are a butcher shop that specializes in providing um, quality meats and poultry from small Ontario farms. A lot of people come to us because there's a story behind the meats that we sell. We know all the farmers personally. Um, they raise their animals uh, with ethics in mind, so no antibiotics or hormones. These are things that you can't find in a lot of grocery stores, and that's something that a lot of customers like to come in and, and hear about and learn about. We like to be as informed as possible as, as, as uh, staff. As, as, as for customer service, so that if someone comes in and wants to know how their animal was raised, we can tell them uh, pretty much without ha having actually done it ourselves that we know the people who have done it and this is how they do it. There's a lot of blurriness when it comes to purchasing meat, especially meat. There's a lot of things that questions that uh, are unanswered because there's so many steps between the producer and the customer. So in Canada, we, we, we're lucky, we have a pretty good um, government regulations uh, around growth hormones in poultry and in pork especially. Uh, you'll still find um, hormone use in, uh, in beef production, um, but even like some of the larger farms that I've, I've been in touch with, it's very rare to find it in Canada. Based on uh, all, all what, what many people say about how our immune systems aren't as strong as they used to be, uh, because of the amounts of antibiotics that we ingest, um, I, I think there's definitely risks there. And I'd prefer it if we didn't have to take those risks. I think it's just kind of the smarter way to be. So an example of one of the producers that I like to work with because of the, the style in which they raise the animal, uh, the farm is called South 50 Farms, they're out near Port Hope. Hi, my name is James Sculthorpe and welcome to South 50 Farms where we raise all natural grass-fed beef. I run the farm with my brother Ian, we've been doing it for about five years now. Um, but be, prior to running South 50 Farms and raising uh, all natural grass-fed beef, We've been, our family's been on the land in some form of farming since about the 1840s in the Sculthorpe family. For us, the reason we chose to raise grass-fed beef uh, and on our farm uh, was largely because of the holistic nature of it. We wanted to see the whole process right from the start, from having the calves on our land all the way through to working with our customer and seeing that whole process, which is very unique in the industry or in the cattle industry. And so we like that whole approach. We like the environmental aspects of it. We like the animal husbandry aspect of it. And also just our own personal connection with the land and seeing it's really creating a product and seeing it through to the consumer. Some people will say there's a different taste. Uh, some people say it's a bit of a gamier taste. It's a leaner meat. Uh, so it's not quite as fatty as other meats, so and the fat can really drive the flavor. Uh, we've had a lot of consumers tell us, and a lot of older consumers say that this is what beef tasted like when they were younger. Uh, so we obviously we have a bias. We obviously really enjoy the taste of our meat. Uh, very tender, very flavorful, but it is different than what you're, what I think the average consumer might be used to. 
In Canada, hormones are not permitted in the production or the, the growing of poultry and pork. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case in beef. So consumers looking for hormone-free product really need to be aware and ask the right questions to determine if there are hormones uh, in the beef. We don't use antibiotics or hormones just because that's what our consumers are looking for. They don't want that in their feed. And it's not that they're just they just don't want that in their feed, and there's lots of publicity uh, around that, a lot of negative press around that, so our consumers just don't want to deal with that at all, and this way when they buy our products they know that they're getting a product that is free and clear of those substances. Let's take beef for example. Uh, antibiotics would only be used if an animal gets sick, so uh, say somehow it comes down with uh, like an infection, uh, a vet is called in and, and that drug is administered. Now the difference between say industrial farming is um, some feeds uh, will be laced with, uh, with antibiotics as a whole just as it's almost like um, inoculating the population to prevent any of the animals getting sick. So I, I prefer to use farmers that are a little smaller, a little bit more space, don't need that type of treatment uh, uh, for all of their animals. If the consumer is looking for a hormone, antibiotic-free, grass-fed product that hasn't been subject, hasn't been put raised in a feedlot and fed corn, then yes, they might perceive greater quality and value in our product. And, and that's really who we're tailoring to. I mean, that's how we want to raise an animal, and we're connecting with those consumers that share that that belief or that uh, that mindset. I think grass-fed uh, beef is preferred because it's that kind of back-to-basics farming philosophy. I don't know if it's sustainable to feed as many people that eat beef, which is why it, not all beef is grass-fed, because it requires a lot of pasture, a lot of space. We've worked with Peter Scanigan since we started our farm. He came out here and we shipped our first couple animals to him and we've grown the business from four animals in our first year and hopefully this year we'll ship close to 50 animals. Uh, they've been a great partner, they share a lot of our same philosophies, local Ontario based products, antibiotic and hormone free. Uh, they've just been a great partner and we've been able to grow with them so it's, uh, we're very excited to be able to sell our product there. I'd like to think that we can actually make a, make a bit of a difference in the farming community so that the, the, the producers will know that in order to sell their, their product at a store like mine, or even um, like some of the other butcher shops in the city, uh, they have to meet these standards before they can do it. The truth is, is that meat raised like this costs a certain amount of money. And so again, it's not for everyone, but I think it can be for everyone if they eat it in moderation. I think we really, as a society, have to start thinking about a more sustainable future. And when I say sustainable, I mean definitely in an environmental way like how we are restoring the environment, how our animals are being raised on the, on the land that uh, they live on. So are we going to be able to eat one pound steaks every day for the rest of our lives? No, we can't. So we really have to start thinking of alternatives to our eating habits as well as um, the habits in which farmers produce the meat and be very cautious about um, where we're getting our, our meat from and, and, and not always look at the bottom line. Not always look at like, oh, if this is only 99 cents a pound, it must be worth it, because it's not going to be.